see what we can come up with. I think you can do great work with this. Well, thank you. We're looking forward to it. Again, this is only a year. And yeah, we're not riding this horse, but what we're going to do, we're going to try to get him where he's handling pretty well. He's hard to catch. Can't touch him, anything like that. That's right. Cannot touch him. Cannot touch him. We got a halter on him while we go in the stall, and that's been about it. And that's and all the, that he's had. That's, that's all he's had is, done. This is his first time with, with a halter on him. Okay. So we're going to so. take that and we'll just work with that and just see where we get to with it. Okay, Rick. Thank that's you so lot. much. Hi, I'm Rick Quee. We're out here today, we have a, a year old Arabian, purebred Arabian, never been handled much at all. We put a halter on him just to get him out here in the round pen. I believe that's one of the few times he's ever had one on. He really don't want to lead at all. Don't want us touching him at all. What we're going to do, we're going to have to catch him. We're going to have to get our hands on him first. We're going to put a noble head stall on him. The way this thing works, it works off a bump. Instead of it actually being pressure points, there is none. It hangs loose, but at the same point, it pulls on his head in a different angle. It hits certain nerves that other things don't get to. So before we can use this thing, we've got to get it on him first of all. And so what we're going to do, we're going to try to get him where we can catch him. Now one of the big fears of this coat is he's afraid of a rope. He is absolutely terrified of a rope. So we're going to have to play with him. We're going to kind of throw at him a little bit and try to keep him where he figures out this is not going to hurt him and he'll probably hit these panels a time or two before we're through. One of the reasons we use the prefords, they usually don't end up with anything on them after they do hit them. But what we're gonna do, we're just gonna try to ease him around here a little bit and let him figure out that we're not gonna hurt him. And he sure don't want us getting very close to him, as you can tell. But we're just gonna Just gonna catch a foot every now and then, kind of let him get used to that. And uh, once he kind of gets the idea that we're gonna do something with him, I think he'll kind of calm down a little bit. We don't actually try to run him away from us. Don't ever try to scare him away. We, in fact, we'd rather he wouldn't even run at all. But you know, he's trying to figure out how to get away from us completely. Once he stops and looks at me, kind of back off of him, give him a little bit of room. Let him see if he'll just let me touch him. Once he lets me touch him a little bit, then a lot of things start changing on him. So he's still a long way from letting me catch him or anything. As you can see, he's pretty scared of this rope, and that's one of the things we're going to try to work out of him as we go through this. We just held it on him long enough to let him kind of feel that we might have a hold of him. That's all we're trying to do. I try to get him to come back to the same spot and stop again. But sometimes they don't want to do that. Like I say, this coat's pretty salty. He's, he's kind of full of it. But we'll kind of work that out of him. We'd always hoped that he'd go back to the same spot and stop again. Let me touch him again. You know, they are definitely creatures of habit. They'll go to the same spot every time that they can. But, you know, we want him to calm down if he will. So his biggest thing right now is just not letting me touch him. She figures out that I'm not the worst thing that ever happened to him. I think he'll be all right. You know, we're gonna try to try to get him completely over that. Like I say, the halter breaking, we gotta catch him first. That's for one of the shears. And a lot of ways to go about catching one. I don't like to really scare one away from me. I'd rather let him figure out that we're all right rather than 
the knot will go. So he's just sure shy of us. He don't want us to get up close to him at all. And he's already figured out which way not to go. And uh, that's a pretty good sign that he figures this out. Figures out what to do. Again, him being an Arabian, you don't just run Arabian around a little while and they give out. This thing's got more endurance than you can imagine. He'll stay put for quite some time. We'll go. He just won't quite let me touch him yet. This is not part of the program yet, his idea anyway. When you get a coat like this, you've got to give him just a little bit of time to kind of ease down with it. And you see each and every time when he comes to it, he figures out he's going to get around me. He would try you just a little bit to see if he might run over you. You know, if he lets you touch him, you walk up and just go ahead and try to put a halter on him, he's gonna figure out pretty quick he done the wrong thing. If you touch him and walk away, he'll gradually get to the point he'll let you come back and touch him again. And that's what we're hoping for. He'll get to where he let us just walk up to him and just touch him. He's trying to a little bit now. He's trying to be a little better with us. So we're gonna kind of work him around here a bit. You notice his relief was when he stopped, we let him stand there. We didn't ask him to do any more. He didn't have to do any more. He stood there. Okay, this is what we wanted of him. Again, anything in your hand, this coat notices it. Anything at all. And so it's gonna take us a few minutes just to get him calm down. Another little trick you might want to watch for, if the coat let me pet him in that particular spot, that's about where he'll go back to. Again, you don't put your novel on right off the bat. You just don't do that. You give him a few minutes to kind of figure out what's going on with everything. And if he'll go back to the same spot again, Go. Let me touch him. We're gradually getting somewhere. Again, he's real leery of anything like a rain, a rope, or anything like that. He's real touchy about all that stuff. So, you know, every time I touch him with the rain, you know, like I say, he's wanting to leave out with me. We may have to end up doing a little bit more with him. I'd like to get him to quit right there. As you can see, I mean, just my hand doesn't bother him that much. When I touch him with that rain, he wants to leave out on me. Try never to walk into a coat in that predicament right there, because if he does turn around on you, he can sure kick you. You'd rather get him back to the right spot. And this would be the spot that give you more room to get away from him. In other words, his heels are quite a ways away from you. Head a little closer, he keeps trying to get me into that same situation.
He's pretty smart about that. He's not gonna let me get my arm over his neck to even hold him, so we're gonna have to probably rope him and get him. What he's gonna give to us just a little bit more. You always try and check them out to see what point they're gonna let you work with them. And like I say, this coat, he's pretty, pretty tight wound. He, he feels pretty good. You know, we're not gonna tie this on to anything or anything else. We're just gonna try to hang on to it. And if I can ever get him to look at me, that's when I'm gonna give him some slack on it. If he'll just turn his head towards me and look at me. Like that. All right, once he does, then I give him slack. And I, when I say slack, I loosen up on it. Get it where it's not quite as tight on it. We got his brother over there kind of having a little fit. But. but again, we want him to look back at us before we actually give up and slack off any if we can. As you can see, the old coach's real nervous about anybody touching him or anything. You know, he doesn't want us very close to him. Takes his mind off of me, I try to pull his head back a little bit. Just show him that, you know, hey, we're going to touch him and handle him. We're back to basically the same spot we was over here a while ago. The only difference is now that I can't actually turn his head back to me rather than just letting him take it and go the other way with it. So what we want to do is just give him a little bit of time here to actually calm down. Another situation, you know, if he can get used to just anything over his nose, just right now, that gives you a little chance to, to actually put something on him here in a minute, maybe. The least you can have on a Halder or Noble, whatever you're putting on one the first time, we suggest a Noble. But the least you can have on it, the better you are. Because they actually get used to it. Never try to sneak up one and hurry. Take your time. Because if he don't let you put it on now and you sneak up real quick and put it on there, what you done, you taught him to be head shy. You know, and this is not a good situation. So you want to give him just a few seconds to get used to it. Again, we'll bring him back to us and start over. Keep over. You notice there's definitely no leading involved. He will not give to me an ounce, so we'll gradually get that. We couldn't out pull him. You know, so you got a lot of the old fashioned ways of breaking one to lead is, you know, tie it to something and drag it around. We're going to show you a little different angle on that. Show you a different way to do it. And it's when you do that, you can sure damage your horse's neck. And you can do a lot of damage to him, a lot more than what you think. And you still don't get him halter broke like you want him. A lot of difference between leading and halter broke. And we hope to have this coat halter broke during a while. And I think we can. Again, once they calm down a little bit and they let you do something with them, you want to take advantage of it, but you don't want to don't want to get in a hurry and scare him or anything. You can help it. We got it all on, but the throat latch and the throat latch just hangs under there to keep it from slipping off on him. So we got that now. So now then, we're going to try to get him to lead him a little bit. See, when I had the rope around his neck, turned him loose while ago, it took about all I could do to hold him. I couldn't actually hold him with one hand for sure. With this noble on him, I can hold him. And, you know, now we're gonna hopefully teach him how to lead and how to follow us around, and we can 
get around all this situation. Now if you notice, every time I pull on him, he don't want to give to me at all. What I do, I get out here in front of him, I hold enough pressure on it that he can feel it, and he knows it's there. And when he takes a step or two towards me, then I release it, like he walked into it. But again, like I say, this has been an unhauled or broke coat. It takes a few minutes to get everything done that you want to get done with. It. He still hadn't took a step towards me. He took a few sideways steps, but never had taken a step forward. And you don't want to give up until he does. You notice I keep moving him. There you go. Right, we had one that trip. He's trying to take it back away from me. We're going to take that as a try anyway. And as long as they try a little bit, we're all right. See, that time we got three or four steps. So this is, you can see where we're going with this thing pretty quick. Now as we teach him that we want him up close to us rather than back there, this is when we get, get him halter broke as we spoke of. Now again, I'm not holding much pressure on him at all right now. He's mainly doing it to himself. But once he decides that this is the spot to be, right there. Then I slack up on it, give it back to him, and try to show him that, hey, we're all right. You know, again, now, if I hadn't have had my noble on him, he would have probably left me right there. And he would have run away like he did a while ago, but instead I held him with one hand. So I was able to hold him with one hand. Now, if you let a horse get jerked loose from you a time or two, he never forgets it. He'll never, ever forget it. So you don't want that happening. So whenever you start working with a young coat like this, make sure you can hold them. You know, and again, you don't want to tie them to something that's going to hurt them and, and really make it rough later on on them, but you want to make sure that you can hold them. So if you don't hold them at this point, it's not going to get any better until you show them exactly what it is. Now, he's giving me a little bit of a fit right now, and all I'm doing is just holding enough pressure on it just to show him. There you go. Again, he just took one step for me. But one step is better than nothing, you know. One step's a whole lot better than nothing. So as long as I can get that one step, we take that as moving, coming to you. If you notice, I never run him away from me. I bring him to me each and every time. Now, if I scared him back, then we'd have him come back to me. What I'd get into is every time I'd move, this horse would jump. We don't want to do that. Instead, we want to walk away from him. We do not want him jumping away from us. And he keeps trying me each and every time. So he tried a couple of steps that time, but that really wasn't where I wanted him. You know, he knows now enough to be able to come forward to me. He's still got that wild look that he wants to run away from me. We're going to stop that here in a little bit. If you notice now he's trying to bend his head to me. Every time I kind of walk away from him, he's trying to bring his head with me. That's what we're wanting to do. We're wanting to show him that when there's any kind of pull on that noble at all, he gives to me. And if you notice, it took a very few minutes for him to get to where he gives to me. I don't have to pull much on him now, maybe, but we're going to see there he comes. All right, once we can get him to doing that that quick, you know, we have taught him something pretty fast. And something will stay with him forever. But you know, same situation. Yeah, you, know, you have to use some common sense with it. You have to be able to show them what you want, how you want them to do it. And most of all, don't let them get away from you, pull away from you or anything like that. Because then they learn that all they gotta do is leave. You know, and, and you don't want that for sure. Because that's where you get into the dangerous type horses 
and stuff because if they if they're constantly thinking about leaving you, everything that happens they think about leaving. If you happen to be in front of them, you're gonna get run over. So you don't want to do that. You want to be able to take this thing and make a horse out of it that will actually stand here and let you handle it, pet it, rub it. And we're gonna saddle this coat in a minute. Just kind of getting used to it. Whatever we do to him now, if you notice. He's trying to pay attention to us. Instead of going the other way, he's trying to come to us. And that's what we want. We show him that when he comes to us, it all is well. The reason we do this, or the how we we're able to do this, is with this noble head stop. If you notice each and every time, it twists just a little bit on his head. The way this thing works, is it works off of basically just a bump. It's very loose on his head. Doesn't, there's no pressure points, it's not tight. There's nothing on there that's binding him. He can breathe well. Everything about it's loose. See, I can put my hand under it, put my hand all the way around it. But at the same point, if he shook his head or he went to run away from me, I can still stop it. And again, this is a pretty salty kind of coat. You know, we're gonna play with him until we get him where we want him. But he's pretty salty kind, but you know, getting one to lead him, is a big step, but now if you just break them to lead and get them where they are, where you can barely drag them around, you didn't do anything. You got to get them where you can handle them. Because if you don't at this point, when they get to be two, same horse, just a lot tougher. So you got to you got to teach them at this point. You know, hey, you got to be still, and you got to handle right. And so that's what we're trying to do. Now, each and every time I walk away from him, I don't let him stand very long. Instead, I have him come back up to me. His only relief point is when he's up next to me. That's his only relief point. And when he's standing next to me, and I'm able to pet him and rub him, that's his relief point. So we want to be able to show him, as long as he can, does what we want, it'll be real nice. You know, if he's not, that's bad. You know, and again, I let him touch me when he comes up but he's not trying to bite me. And if he ever did try to bite me, I could stop him with this noble simply by bumping. But he, he has not, and usually once you get their attention, they won't. Horse usually bites you because he's mad about something or just downright on me. You know, and you don't want none of those things happening. So we're gonna lead him a little bit right now and just kind of get him. And again, like we talked about earlier, there's a difference between halter broke and lead. Once we get him halter broke, we should be able to do about anything we want to with him. But you see the old coat? He knows well when I want him to come with me. But when he fights with me, he's actually fighting with himself. Until he figures that out, I keep a little pressure on him. But I stop him every now and then, let him pet him a little bit, and let him be all right. Now again, this coat's a lot too young to ride. We're going to tinker around with him a little bit, get him kind of used to a saddle, and uh, you know he was scared of the rope while ago, and so this saddle blanket sure isn't going to be a whole lot better for him, I'm sure. But you know, what better time to show him the saddle blanket's not going to get him than right now, you know. And if you notice, I can hold his head, I can keep his head turned towards me all the time with my noble. And as long as I can keep his head towards me, turned towards me, the only way he can get away from me is side pass away. A little harder for him to do that, you know. Like I said, you know, you remember this coat was sure enough shy of everything. Still is, but we're getting there. Gradually starting to show him that right there is all we wanted. We just want to be able to put that saddle blanket on him for right now. We'll do more. But the biggest thing of it is he's learned that we're not going to hurt him. That's what you're able to teach him with a noble head stop. You're able to show him that you will not hurt him. What you are going to do, you're going to be able to saddle him. You're going to be able to turn him around. You're going to be able to do things with him. Now again, when he walked away from me there, if I had went to him, that wouldn't be a good situation. Instead, I bring him back to me. Every time he walks away from me, I bring him to me. If 
If you notice, he's calming down. His eyes are starting to look more calm. They're starting to look more like, you know, everything's okay with him. And it is. You know, everything's fine with him. You know, he still can't believe he has to follow me. So I have to keep reminding him a little bit that he has to do this. But we, one of the things, like I said, we worked on earlier was the fact that he didn't like anything around his head or anything like that. Well, we got to get that out of him. So before I pet him and rub him or release anything on him, I may, I'm going to have him put his head into that ring. And that will gradually work it down to the point on the catching part where we can catch him. So, see, that time wasn't nearly as difficult to put it over his head. Every time he lets me do something that I like, I pet him, I rub him. I show him that this is a good thing. This is what I want. He just can't quite bear the fact of anything going over his head, but if you notice when he tried to leave, he bumped the noble. When he bumped the noble, he come back. Okay, this is a very valuable lesson when we start riding this horse, whatever we do to him, be a very, very valuable lesson to him. Because he'll learn that he, if he jumps, he shies from us. But that's not what we want. We bring him back each and every time. Now, if we brought him back by chasing him away from us, in other words, running him down, he may not come back to us real quick. And so we want him coming back to us pretty quick if we can. We go on that. Now we're going to just set the saddle up on him and kind of get him used to that. When you get him to this point, he's pretty much all right with everything I think. You got to imagine if he was scared of a rope while ago, what this saddle has to look like to him. I'm sure it doesn't look like anything he wants to mess with. So we're going to go real easy with him. But again, with the Noble, I'm able to keep him here with me. Instead of letting him leave out. I never just walk up to a coat and throw a saddle on him. You, know, you always want to pet him and rub him a little bit. And let him get the feel of it anyway. Let him see that it's there. What you doing to him. Again, he's going back to the same part again. He wants to leave. And we can't let him leave. We have to make him come back each and every time. Of course, he hadn't been leading but about 15 minutes, so you know it takes it takes them a little while to learn that they cannot actually get loose from them. Now that time I gave him just a little bump, just explaining to him that that was the wrong thing to do. Sure didn't like that none. Long way from staying there yet, but it's up there, so I'm gonna try to show him that was exactly what we wanted of him. It'll probably fall off a few times, but you know, we're just gonna kind of work with him. Easy.
We expect a few times of that. When it moves, he can tell it. He feels it pretty good. So. Oh God, oh. Oh God, oh. Oh God, oh. Give him another little session of blankets see if you. If you notice when I try to put the blanket up on him and he jumps, I bump him. I show him that's the wrong thing to do. And when he finally decides to let me ease it up there without jumping, then that's when we'll show him that that's what we want. Here we go.